Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here, and it's time for a real life horror story. The kind of thing you'd think was an urban legend if it didn't have the new stories to back it up. The following events happened on Valentine's Day 2007. To celebrate the day, married couple Art and Lois Serin had been out for a romantic meal in their home city of Carlsbad, California. After that they went to the cinema and watched the movie. On their way home they gave their daughter Jodine a call. She failed to answer the phone so they decided to swing by her condo on Swallow Lane to check on her. 39 year old Jodine had a mental disability. Some news reports say that she had schizophrenia, some say that she had a learning difficulty so I'm not sure which is true, maybe both. Either way she was high functioning enough to be able to live on her own but she was unable to drive and she needed her parents help with certain things so they dropped by on a regular basis. That night Lois had a bad feeling. Jodine usually answered the phone and she hadn't said she was going out anywhere. They got to the condo at around 10pm. There was no answer at the door so they let themselves in with their own key. The lights were on and nothing seemed out of place. Everything was normal. They thought perhaps she was in bed or taking a shower so they headed to the bedroom and pushed the door open. To their surprise, they saw Jodine naked in bed with a man on top of her. It was dark in the room and they didn't get a good look at the man. They assumed that they'd interrupted their daughter in an intimate moment so the embarrassed parents quickly shut the door and told them to get dressed. They walked into the kitchen and waited for their daughter and her mysterious lover to come out. After a while, Jodine and the unknown man failed to emerge so the father went back to the bedroom door and knocked. There was no answer and no noises came from within so he pushed the door open once more. There was no sign of the man and Jodine lay unconscious on the bed. He pulled his daughter from the bed and lay her on the floor and attempted to resuscitate her but it was far too late. Jodine was dead. She had been sexually assaulted, strangled and bludgeoned around the head. Now, you might imagine that parents walking in on a man raping and murdering their disabled daughter on Valentine's Day might be the most disturbing aspect of this story. But it wasn't until the forensic examination was done that the true depth of this horror was revealed. An autopsy showed that Jodine had died from the blunt force trauma to the skull, but when her parents found her, she had already been dead for around four hours. What they actually walked in on was a man having sex with a cold, lifeless corpse. There was no sign of forced entry at Jodine's condo, nor any evidence of a struggle inside. It seems to suggest that she knew this man and had let him into her home willingly. Her parents didn't get a good look at the man, but her father thought that he recognised him from her friend group. There was DNA left at the scene, but it didn't match anybody in the police database or any of Jodine's friends. The only other clue was from a woman who lived in the same condo complex. She saw a man sprinting down an embankment near to the building around the same time that the killer had made his exit. Again, it was too dark to get a good look at him and she didn't see his face. With this scant evidence and no clear motive, the identity of Jodine's killer remained a mystery. It would take another 10 years for forensic technology to advance enough to provide any more clues. In 2017, Carlsbad detectives sought the help of a company called Parabon Nanolabs. Using DNA phenotyping, they were able to predict the mystery man's appearance and ancestry. According to the results, Jodine's killer was most likely a fair-skinned man of Northern European ancestry with green or blue eyes, sandy blonde or light brown hair and some freckles. Combining this with the eyewitness testimonies from the night of the murder, they were able to create a digital photo fit of what they thought the killer would look like. They also used a technique called investigative genetic genealogy to link the killer's DNA to possible blood relatives. 
all sources pointed to a man named David Mabrito being the killer. The only problem was, by the time they worked this out, David was dead, having taken his own life six years earlier. Unable to get a DNA sample from David himself, they contacted his ex-wife and son. They provided DNA samples which confirmed that David Mabrito was indeed Jodine's killer. Identifying the man that murdered their daughter was a bittersweet moment for Jodine's parents. On the one hand, after 10 years they finally had some closure knowing that the man that killed their daughter wasn't going to hurt anybody else. On the other hand, his death meant that he would never face justice for his crimes and he would never be questioned to find out why he had done what he did. There's very little information about David Mabrito himself. It's disturbing to think that he had a family, although he had divorced his wife a year before the murder took place. News reports describe him as being a transient. He took his own life four years after the murder. Whether it was the memory of his crimes that caused him to take this action is unknown. We also don't know if he felt any remorse for what he did. He was a man capable of murdering a disabled woman and defiling her corpse in the most brutal way on Valentine's Day. Any insight into his private thoughts, feelings and motivations were taken to the grave with him. So thank you for watching the video, hopefully you found it informative even if it was disturbing. I always feel a bit weird saying this after talking about a subject like this but thanks to everyone who is supporting my work. I couldn't make this sort of stuff without you so thank you very much. So if you're in the mood for more stuff like this I've got plenty more videos on my channel and if you're new here then please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future uploads. Until next time, goodbye.